Peaky Blinders, a show that introduced a whole new generation of men to raised bars for masculinity, a lot of whiskey, brought back the plague of smoking probably single-handedly, and turned a lot of these men into so-called alpha males. Where would we be without you? But fair is fair. We were given an unforgettable show, filled with, my god, so many different layers of everything. It is so freaking complicated. But I finished the show pretty recently. Started it and finished it, actually. Yeah, it took me long enough, I know, but I really do want to talk about it because it truly is a special show. There were a lot of ups and downs, but it really gave me feelings and made me put on an accent that no show has ever done before. Anyway, let's begin. Peaky Blinders is a pretty complicated and yet very simple show at the same time. It is in the beginning based on a real-life gang that operated during the late 1800s in Birmingham, England. And that's about as far as the similarities go. Because Peaky Blinders is about a crime family, the Shelby family. The show explores the rise from the bare essentials of small heath for this family to the heights of power in numbers, money, and even politics and the eventual downfall of the whole empire based on one simple factor, Tommy Shelby. The rise of the Shelby family rests on his shoulders, but so does the fall. We'll get to that later, trust me. You can also trust in this video a little and give it a thumbs up. Thank you. When you're talking about a show like Peaky Blinders, you have to. I mean, you gotta talk about the atmosphere. It's a huge part of everything. You got the slow motion, awesome walks that are in like every single episode, but you can never get sick of them somehow. All the smoking and whiskey that is gonna turn you into basically an addict, the amazing costumes, and most importantly, the setting. This show is very notable for its historical detail. Set in the 1920s to 30s, it depicts the period of post-World War I England in such a great way during a time of heavy uncertainty. The show depicts the working class neighborhoods of small heath and the city's criminal underworld. Birmingham, England, during this time period was a rapidly industrializing city with a pretty big population. And the show accurately reflects this through its depiction of the Shelby family and the people around them, who are a gigantic mix of everything. There are a lot of veterans from the war, struggling to acclimate and to go back to their old lives, not knowing how to be normal again after the horror they had faced, and taking it all out on the people around them. I mean, in the very first episode, there's a scene where a friend of Tommy from the war jumps into their bar and starts to go all nuts on everyone around him, breaking and shouting and fighting. But really, over the long term, this stuff is mainly reflected in our main characters, in a lot more subtle ways, specifically coming from Tommy and also Arthur Shelby, his older brother. And that's where we get to our first important character in the show. Arthur Shelby is a character who goes through so much ups and downs in the show, it's not even funny. On the surface, Arthur is just the hot-headed older brother who is super aggressive and reckless and stupid and always acts impulsively. In reality, from the first season, where he's not even that important, we're immediately given a glimpse into his fragility. How it made him get undermined and beaten by his father, and also losing the position of leader of the family to his younger brother. He's a sensitive dude, who's deeply affected by his memories, and has strong PTSD which is explored much more in the later seasons. It also made him very susceptible to turning to drugs and alcohol as his coping mechanism, even more susceptible to being easily swayed into finding the most extreme solutions for his problems, and easily being swayed towards these. Like how he turned to boxing in season 2 but that made him end up killing a kid in the ring, which led him to meeting Linda and turning to church, becoming a reformed man, later on struggling with that more and eventually accepting himself as nothing more than the killer he is, and turning back to alcohol, and getting even more depressed, and losing Linda Linda and becoming basically nothing more than his job, because any time outside of that, he's either drinking or doing drugs. There are a lot of other important characters explored throughout the show, like Ada, who's the sister in the Shelby family, and whose main struggle is the distinction between her own identity and the clumping of that with her family. John Shelby, who's the other brother, and the idiot basically. Also Finn Shelby, who's the other other idiot brother. Chester Campbell, who's a very important footnote in the rise of the Shelby family. Michael Gray, who is the long-lost son that somehow fits right into the Shelby family as if he was always there. Whose son, you say? Well, that would be Polly Gray. Polly Gray is the big mama, essentially the glue that holds the entire family together. Except she's not very glued herself. She struggles with depression throughout the series, a bad image of herself, paranoia of others, and just plain weird shit. But she is very intelligent, 
She's kind of like the mentor figure for Tommy Shelby, but also, later on, she starts to become like his nemesis as he grows. She can be obnoxious, but also witty. She's very non-self-aware. This pisses me off a lot with her character, where she always acts like she has the moral high ground, as if she's not down here in the mud with the rest of her family. I don't know. Whatever. No big deal. She's a pretty interesting character. Moving on. There are many other characters that come and go, but I'm not gonna be sitting here touching on everyone that appeared in the show, even though they're all important in their own right. But mainly because, despite all the characters in the show, despite it feeling like an ensemble where everyone is equal, make no mistake, this is the Tommy Shelby show. He is the leading man, and he is at the forefront of everything, in every single season, and every single episode. Talking about a character like Tommy Shelby is scary. He's a character that is very much up there in greatness with the likes of Walter White, Tony Soprano, or fucking Michael Scott. Tommy Shelby is a wisecracking, whiskey drinking, cigarette smoking, slow motion badass walking, well dressing super hunk of a man who is played by one of the most talented actors of our time. I said it, and you should agree. He's a brilliant master manipulator and strategist, a guy with an endless supply of ambition. He's ruthless and willing to do whatever it takes to succeed. He's a woman magnet, in the sense that there's a woman dying for his feet in every single season. Attractive woman, of course. But more important than all that, Tommy Shelby's inner struggles are what make him Tommy Shelby. He is at the forefront of the post-World War I look on veterans, struggling with PTSD from the beginning of the show until the very end. He's a man living on borrowed time, as it's portrayed in the show. Arthur and Tommy explain when John dies that they've always seen themselves as already dead, because during the war, at a time when their unit was cut off from the retreat with no bullets left, Tommy and his men accepted their fate. They accepted death right then and there, but it never came and Tommy and his brothers consider themselves dead anyway, and that all the time they've had since has been extra. Probably the reason why he wants to do so much with his life. It's almost as if he wants to earn what he's got, but as the series progresses, he struggles with the weight of the guilt of what he's always doing. He very slowly starts to question the cost of his ambition. Very slowly. He's always looking for a way out of the criminal life, but he keeps getting sucked back into it one way or another. You know the gist of this, we've seen it a million times before. One last job and we're done, but it never stops. The dude works with the Irish and does undercover missions and gets into politics and becomes an MP and gets even more corrupt. That by the time he reaches season 5, suicidal thoughts become almost the main core of his character. He can't live with himself anymore. The season builds up to a big assassination he wanted to pull, and for the first time, on the really big scale, he truly fails, and he feels defeated, and so he does it. He shoots himself. Except he doesn't. And that's where season 6 begins. Identity time. Turns out the gun was empty of bullets, and Tommy Shelby, the soldier, forgot to check his gun. It's 1929, more than a decade after the war. His life could not be more different, but the one thing he had never questioned about himself was that he was a soldier. And he lost that part of his identity. Then he stopped drinking. And I guess that was a bad thing? Because by 1933, he's basically an empty shell of a person. A guy just doing the things he's doing because they're supposed to be done. Going through the motions. Then he loses his daughter, and his son goes towards his stepmom. And he loses another part of his identity as a father. Ultimately, he learns that he has tuberculoma, which means he doesn't have much time, which was, to a man who feels like he's living on borrowed time, quite jarring, surprisingly. He tries to fix everything as fast as he could in the name of his daughter. He wants to clean up his business, give money to the poor, be a symbol of good, before he goes away on his own to die by himself, because his dignity doesn't allow him to be around the people he loves as weak, little, sick, and dying man. After he's set everything right and killed everyone he needed to kill, well, almost everyone, he goes off on his own, waiting for death. That was supposed to be the ending. But, surprise surprise, we're not done. We have a movie to do. No Walter White ending here. Tommy Shelby finds out he was actually fooled into believing he had tuberculoma because apparently his enemies think that the only person that can kill Tommy Shelby is Tommy Shelby himself. How badass is that? But anyway, he goes back and tries to kill the doctor who fooled him. But he doesn't. For once, Tommy Shelby chooses the path of peace, and he goes back to his carriage with all his belongings. It has been burned, symbolizing the death of his old self, and the start of a new beginning on the path of redemption, as he rides away on a white horse, in contrast to the dark horse he rode on in the opening of the show. And that's it. Show done. 
Sorry, I can't give you a conclusion, but they didn't give us a conclusion either. We gotta wait for the movie. I gotta say I'm impressed. Very impressed. Did I want Tommy Shelby to die on his own terms in that cool way, maybe? I guess so. But who knows? Maybe this will work. Tommy Shelby is a character that went through and did a lot. In season 1, he was nothing more than a thug. Season 2, he builds up more of his empire. Season 3, he became big dog. Season 4, he's in politics. Then the downfall comes with season 5 during suicide mode. And finally, going on the path of redemption somehow by the end of season 6. Truly amazing. Peaky Blinders is quite the slow burn. It takes its sweet time setting up each and every intricacy. A lot of walking, a lot of talking, and quite some shooting. It's an awesome show. And you should, of course, watch it. It's a must. It's one of the best looking babies on the market and I can't believe it took me this long to get in on the action. Anyways, I'm gonna go smoke and drink whiskey now. Thanks, show. But you shouldn't do what I'm doing. You should go watch this video I made about God of War Ragnarok. Great. See ya.